you're watching us on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram, it's great to have you with us tonight. And it's getting close to Christmas. So here we are. Front of the tree. Yeah, I've got a little Christmas scene. I said to Ali earlier, we look almost like a Christmas card here with the little background and the tree at the front. So we're a YouTube Christmas card. We are. We're, we're getting ready for the season. I think. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. are. We are. And Jerry even blends in a little bit. I know. Oh, matching. Nice. See, matching, matching yeah. in the tree. We're ready. Yeah, we are. We are. So tonight we've got quite an exciting evening for, for all of us. Um, we have got Steve and mm -hmm. Gemma. It's Steve's, actually, it's his last 7pm. Yeah. And it's the last 7pm of the year. Because uh, we're going to have a break over Christmas where we have uh, the carol service, which is next week. Uh, that's at 5 o'clock next Sunday. And then we'll have a quiz over Zoom afterwards. So do get in touch if you want to want to join in with that. Uh, and we'll send you all of the details. It'd be great to, to have you to join us for that. But this evening, we've got Steve and Gemma, who are going to be talking. It's kind of like an alternative lockdown life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, we'll be having some, some sun worship from Tony and Jess, uh, which will be really lovely to have that. Uh, and then Gemma's going to be speaking to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's, all the way through. All Gemma. the way through. And it is a little bit like ladies' night here at the 7pm. And because we're going to be looking at Mary and just the kind of gutsy woman that she is. I'm going to be taking a little bit of her story and kind of moving away from that idea of this beautiful, serene woman that we see on a Christmas card to someone who actually was pretty obedient and pretty feisty at times, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to be looking at her a little bit later. Sounds brilliant. So we'll be talking about that over Zoom um, after the after the service is finished. So do join us for that. It'll be great. The, the details will all be in the comments. Um, and come and join if it's your first time or if it, you know if you've been been joining in since the beginning. It would be so great to have you and uh, come as you are, uh, ready to chat or ready to just sit and listen. It's, it's totally totally up to you. Um, so should we pray before we uh, before we introduce the interview? Brilliant. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank mm. you for this time with you. We thank you that we could be united even over all these social media platforms. We thank you for a sense of community and of love for one another. And we pray for this evening that you would really um, speak to each one of us into our lives and into our, our hearts. Father, that we would be able to bring anything that we are worrying about before you this evening in worship. In your name, Lord. Amen. 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 Steve, over to you. Everyone. So I'm here with Steve and we're in this now and not yet at the moment with Steve where we're we're very, very on theme for Advent where Steve's with us at the moment. But the Lord has called him onto um, a parish, a benefice in Oxford. So we'll be leaving us shortly and we rejoice with him, but we're also sad to see him go. So I thought what would be good is in this season it's a, just to chat to Steve a little bit about that because in the strange world that we're in, we're not going to be able to have that chat over a cup of coffee after church. So, Steve, for those who maybe have joined us since we shared the news or haven't heard yet, tell us what what's happening. Where are you going? When are you going? Yeah. Well, uh, I am. I've been appointed to be the rector of Hambra and Freeland uh, Benefice. You yeah. say I must not learn not to say Paris. Hambra and Freeland Benefice in the Diocese of Oxford. So it's a set of three villages, uh, Long Hambra Church, Hambra and Freeland. Uh, it's about eight miles outside the city centre of Oxford in a beautiful uh, rural setting. Mm. And we move on the 6th of January and I'm being licensed or instituted, should I say, um, and inducted and installed there at the same time as Joe Biden, actually, on the 20th of uh, January, probably around the same time of day, given the time difference between uh, UK and Washington. Uh, so and not, um, yeah, really exciting, crazy times to be doing this in the middle of a pandemic, eh, Gemma? It is, yeah. I mean, we're not going to forget the day. Now, can we join you? Are you going to let us come? Well, I am very much, of course, it's very. It, it's in the hands of, of um, the Oxford Diocese and, and, and the um, rural dean uh, yeah. in, in the deanery there. But, but uh, I'm very much hoping that whatever they do will be live streamed. Of course, none of us know really now what, what, what January is quite going to look like, uh, but it's not going to be a lot different. But I, I hope there's going to be a light. And if there is, you will most certainly be given the link to, to join in. 
Yeah, we'd love to do that and to, yeah, wish you on your way. So tell us a little bit about God's call in this. You know, we're thinking a lot about that in Advent and God speaking to us and being expectant for the future. What was that like for you? Oh, quite surreal. I mean, nobody's more surprised than I am to be that this that this is happening. I, I loved my <clears throat> I loved my um, role in Cove Parish serving here. And but on my birthday, 14th of July this year, I, I was sitting there uh, reading some article online and I felt this calling from the Lord to just drop everything and go and have a look at the Church of England jobs. I, I, I'm i shocked. I thought, oh, no. So quite reluctantly, I, I went and looked at, at the, the jobs on the Church of England uh, website and um, I saw this this benefice profile for Hamber and Freeland. And it was, I've got to be honest, Gemma, it's a bit like reading my own CV and it was quite, yeah. quite a moving experience. And I thought, oh, wow, I... The Lord's clearly saying something. I should at least apply for this job. But I have to say that the more I went through the process, the more I, I, I fell in love with the place and with, and with the people. And that calling became deep, deeply, quite deeply embedded in, in my heart um, to, to to go there. And of course, I, I was called for interview and by God's grace, uh, I, I've been offered offered the role of rector of Hamber and Freeland. That's great. Uh, and they are, as I say, very surprised, um, but very, very excited yeah, to be going. And they're very blessed to have you. So, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's a lot going on. You've been here for 17 years. So that's 17 years worth of stuff to move from a house. And for those of yeah. us that have done that, we'll know what that's like. So, th- so you're, you're moving, you're moving house. You've got to get to know lots of people. We're in the middle of a pandemic. What are the things that you're excited about? And um, what are the things that you're nervous about? Well, I'm excited to have the ongoing opportunity and blessing of being able to preach the word of God to people uh, and and to disciple and to lead and, and to steer a church. I mean, these are, in, as you know, Jay, it's an incredible privilege and blessing. Yeah. Um, and, and almost for that reason, it, it, it's quite it's quite a, quite a frightening thing to do. I, yeah. I think often clergy we try to project ourselves in, as incredibly self-confident people and capable people. And, you know, we, we're required to do a, a very wide, wide range of things from, from things, singing, puppeteering, theological research, goodness knows what else. But um, what, what, what am I scared of? Uh, I, I'm human. So I, I, I'm worried about failure. Um, I'm worried about you know, a bit of imposter syndrome thrown in there. Why on earth has God called me? Uh, mm-hmm. to have this level of responsibility over people. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think I'm anxious of meeting expectations, mm-hmm. how people will respond to the things that that I want, I, I may want to change, or, or even how they respond to things that I may want to stay the same. Yeah. Because uh, some will be expecting change and some will be expecting things to go on as, as they are. Um and just the general thing of moving house after being here for so long and, and with such a lovely um, church family and having made roots here. We've been on quite a journey here in Cove, as you know. Mm-hmm. And and so we'll be leaving a huge amount of memories behind. Yeah. It's not like I'm 25, is it? So so doing that, at, you know, at, uh, not far short of 60 is quite a big thing for us all. Uh, Amanda's been amazing because she always is. Uh, and so she, she'll get me through a lot of this. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm half excited and, and half quite scared at the prospect of well. So as well, so any prayer forthcoming, much appreciated. Yeah, and it, it is a brave thing to do, isn't it? To I mean, it's a brave thing to respond to, to God's call at any phase in life. But I think as we get older and we get more settled, it becomes it feels like yeah, we feel the cost, don't we? And so, but we also get to experience the blessing of what God will do. So what can we, what over, you know, Christmas and as you move in the new year, what are the things that we can be praying for you and Amanda and Hetty and Shona really specifically? On, on a very practical note, please do pray that the move goes smoothly and uh, COVID safely, not yeah. only for us, but of course for the removals people and any who may at the, at the benefits and at the rectory who may have to be there for one reason and another. Um, so it's a huge practical thing, as anybody knows, moving house. So just pray for the practicalities of that. Um, pray that that we settle well, that Amanda and Hetty and Shona, of course, at university, but she'll be there with us w- when we move and um, living there during 
holidays out, out of university, that, that we settle in well and that, that we, we make good friends quickly, especially, you know, Amanda and, and Hetty and uh, Shona make good friends quickly. And for me, I, I think you all know that, that I, I'm a pastor teacher. I, I've got a passion for preaching the scriptures. And so I'd actually like you, like our folks here, to, to pray for the hearts of those at Hamber and Freeland to be to be well prepared to hear to hear the word of God. Yeah. And that I will preach it faithfully and simply. Yeah, yeah, we we will do that. And although though it's goodbye, we're, we're gonna have a, a proper um few things to say goodbye in this slightly covid thing so we'll be doing um on wednesday the 16th we've got uh, an online uh, leaving do then on the 20th we've got your last service as well yep. so we're looking um forward to being able to celebrate that as well with you and obviously although you'll go we'll still keep in still keep in touch we'll want to hear what's oh. happening in, in oxford but also, even after you've left, now I don't know what you can say about this, but I heard that we might be able to get to see you on the screens in our living room a little bit after the 20th. Yes, uh, Amanda and I are going to be on the repair shop, for those of you who watch that TV show, probably on Boxing Day. The confirmed BBC schedule is uh, coming out on the 5th of December. And we will also be a double page feature, we are told, in the Christmas edition of the Radio Times. <laughs> brilliant so, so we can cheer you on there yeah, as well. so yeah you get to see us on tv almost certainly on boxing day but yeah great yeah. great what uh what a great introduction for your new parish where, where you'll go benefits yeah that would be lovely wearing. for, for yeah. hamber and freeland i think yeah yeah well thanks steve for being so willing to be open and to share today and for everything Thank that you've you done for uh, the last 17 years I know that a number of your sermons will remain in in my head and heart and I know that's true for probably everybody in the parish actually so thank you so. thank you so much Gemma god bless you yeah cheers yeah. bye everyone mm -hmm.
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my soul. Cause you are good, good. And Lord God, we thank you so much for meeting with us tonight. In our homes, in our kitchens, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, Lord, we thank you that you are present with us now. And Lord, we offer you our lives in this season as we're thinking about Christmas and getting ready for Christmas, Lord. We ask that you will draw close to us and our families. And we particularly ask that you will draw close to those who are potentially facing a Christmas alone this year or those who maybe don't know who to bubble with or have to make difficult decisions over that. We think of those who are in hospital at this time or care homes at this time. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this season, but help us to always be mindful for those of who this season will be difficult. In your name, amen. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that worship. That was so lovely to have some sung worship. Even though we're not in the building together, we, we still have that opportunity to worship together, even over the virtual space. Um, so, Gemma, I think it's over to you next. It is to over, over to me Come next. and speak to us. But just a little reminder for um, if you, or if you joined us a little bit later, that's okay. That next week, half past seven, we have our Christmas Christmas quiz. So like a pub quiz, but on Zoom, you can bring your own snacks and your own drinks. And we're just going to have a short time together just to hang out, really. Um, feel free to do some revision. Last time I realised I should have learned a little bit more about dinosaurs. But I did <laughs> just well on the dinosaur questions. But this is Christmas and I'm feeling a bit more dinosaurs. confident. Yeah. Who knows? I'm feeling confident on the Christmas oh, question. So anyway, I, I might regret saying that later, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> half past seven next week on Zoom, join us for our Christmas quiz. But yeah, I don't know. Brilliant. And that, now over to you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my living room. As you can see this evening, I've brought my nativity set out as we're going to be talking about one of the characters in the Christmas story. You can be reminded with the scene behind you. Now, if I was to ask you to name one or maybe two Christians that have inspired you, people whose faith you've looked at and it has made you want to invest in your faith more, who would those people be? 
maybe for some of us it would be people like Mother Teresa or Jackie Pullinger or Billy Graham or Brother Andrew or maybe someone that we know that's been on the mission field or someone that's serving God in an amazing way um, in this country or yeah just things that we've heard them do and inspire us. Now I imagine and in fact in the Zoom afterwards we can we can share some notes on this and it'd be great to say different people that we thought of. And I would imagine although we would say different people and they would have different stories and different journeys of faith, they would have one thing in common. And it wouldn't be that they like the same things or that they were all rich or that they were all poor or that they had the same hobbies even. But it would be that they've all gone on a journey of obedience to God. The stories of faith that inspire us are those that have stepped out and have done something extraordinary, something that has built the kingdom of God and impacted the lives of those around them in either big or smaller ways. But this stepping out, this growing of God's kingdom, all begins by being obedient and being obedient to the call that God has for us. And obedience is inspiring. When we see someone uh, do what God has asked them to do and step out in faith, that almost gives us courage, if you like, it encourages us to be able to step out in faith ourselves. And in some ways that obedience can be infectious. We hear people hearing from God and then following him, and that makes us wanna do that in our own lives. And tonight, I want us to look at one of the characters in the Christmas story who is such a great example of obedience and to see what we can learn from them. And that character is Mary. Now, Mary, we all know, had a pretty crucial role in the Christmas story. But we often see her as this sweet young girl in love with Joseph and chosen by God. And if you've played her in the school play, and I played Mary when I was seven, I'm sure a number of us have, we can talk about that later as well. But we will have seen that we will have created this perfect family portrait for our parents to take pictures of, with Mary and Joseph holding this beautiful baby in this lovely stable, although most of us probably wouldn't want to give birth in a stable, it was still this beautiful kind of Christmas card picture. And Mary is seen as beautiful and serene. But I actually think Mary is a pretty strong woman, and to be honest with you, I think she's pretty gutsy. Let's read what happens to her when she is in that moment that she discovers that she is going to give birth to the saviour of the world. And to give you a bit of a background here so we can imagine the, the scene as I read it to us, Mary would have been 13 or 14, probably 15 at the most. She would have been from a village, so she wouldn't have been very affluent. And seeing an angel would not have been an everyday occurrence, so this would have been quite an unusual situation that she finds herself in. And let me read you what happens. It's, I'm reading from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. So let's just imagine that. You're a teenage girl. And you have to explain to the people around you that you are pregnant. But don't worry, 
it's not a scandal, you've not done anything wrong, and in fact, what actually happened was an angel visited you and told you that you're gonna have the Son of God. Sure, at that moment, everyone's gonna believe you. Of course they're not. But yet, this is what God's saying to Mary, would you, would you take this on? So let's look at a couple of things that we can see from Mary's response to that and how she's obedient to God and how we can learn how to be obedient to God through the example that we see on Mary. Firstly, Mary's obedience isn't blind obedience and it isn't naivety. Sometimes people think that being a Christian means that we engage with faith and we engage with our emotions when it comes to doing things and we're led by our faith and our heart, but we don't really engage our brain. Well, we do stuff because we think it's our faith that says we should or it feels right, but we don't think things through. I find it quite ironic that people think this because study has always been such a key part of the Christian faith. And throughout the Bible, we see people wrestling with God and asking God questions, not just blindly following without wrestling with the things that he's saying to them. And the same happens here with Mary. She doesn't just say, oh, okay then. Her first response to the angel is, how will this be? She doesn't just swallow it, hook, line and sinker. But actually what we see earlier in the passage is that she's greatly troubled by this angel popping by, wondering what kind of greeting she's going to receive. Yes, it would have been a wonderful thing, but it would have also been a terrifying thing. And we know that because the angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary. So Mary's trying to figure this out. Yes, sure, there's the obvious question about how she's going to conceive a child when <laughs> obviously her and Joseph haven't done anything to, uh, to enable that to happen. But then the angel explains to her or to how it will happen through the Holy Spirit. But there probably would have been the question in Mary's mind as well about why was she chosen? Why was she the highly favoured one? So the angel goes on to explain to answer her question. It will happen through the Holy Spirit. But not just that, the angel then goes on to give some rationale behind that and talks about uh, how her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant and how Elizabeth wasn't, thought she couldn't have children. But yet she is able to, even in her old age. And the angel explains that what is impossible is possible with God. She says nothing is impossible with God. Now, for all the people uh, who we might think of and have been thinking of earlier, who are our heroes or people that have inspired us in our faith, I would imagine if we were able to ask them, some of them may be dead, some of them may be alive, but if we're able to ask them um, if they could testify to the fact that God has done things that they thought were impossible or were miracles or things they prayed for but just didn't think God would answer, I would imagine they would probably be able to tell us stories of God doing exactly that, answering prayers that seem just beyond the realm of possibility. Because as the famous phrase goes, God doesn't call the equipped, the highly skilled, the talented, but he equips those that he's called to do the work that he has called them to. Whether that is a young girl from a village that probably just seems very ordinary because often the heroes of the faith are not the heroes of society. Often they're the forgotten people of society as Mary and Joseph may have been just two quite ordinary people. But yet God chooses them, God chooses them and the Holy Spirit uses them. We need to not underestimate what God can do through us when we put our lives in his hands. Because when we commit ourselves to God in the way that we see that Mary did, we can trust and know that he is committed to us. And Mary knew despite the potential humiliation and the shame of saying yes to this, but yet she knew that, but she knew that God was committed to her as much as she's committing to him. So she responded to the angel and said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And that leads us to the second point. Obedience to God often looks like adventure and sacrifice. When we think about our heroes or those people that have inspired us, I imagine their life would seem like an adventure. Whether that's living as a missionary in another country or seeing other people's lives transform just down the road. But they would probably also speak of sacrifice. What makes it an adventure is often at the beginning we don't 
know necessarily the full extent of what God is calling us to. You know, the angel, when he, they spoke to Mary, said that she would have a son. They said what her son's name was. They said what the, her son's identity was, who he was, who he was going to be. But they didn't say the details of Jesus's life and what would happen to him. And that's not unusual. Often when God calls us or speaks to us, we hear the first step, but not the full story. If we think about the call of Abraham, when God called him to leave his people and to go to somewhere, but not where. God says, I'll tell you when you've left where we're going. Abraham had to step out to go on this journey, this adventure, but not quite know where the destination was. So obedience for Abraham, obedience for Mary meant knowing the first step, but not the full story. And that isn't unusual either, because often when God calls us, we, we know what the first step should look like, but we don't know what the end of the story is going to be. And not only that, we often don't see the fullness of what the story will be. And that was definitely true of Mary. Mary, yes, she got to see Jesus's life, but she didn't get to see all the churches that the disciples that followed him planted. She hasn't got to see the last 2000 years of the effect of Christianity has had all over the world. How many people have come to meet Jesus and to know him because she said yes. This is how it works for us as well, isn't it? We say yes and we maybe step out and then more is revealed as we go on. But we will probably never really know the impact that we have on building God's kingdom. And it's probably quite good for us, actually, that we don't get to know the full story. But we see this obedience for Mary, how it involves sacrifice. And we see that for Abraham as well. You know, Abraham left his home, left what he knew to follow God. Mary would have been aware of the shame and the stigma to be a mother of an illegitimate child. or well, that's how it would have been seen anyway. And then not only that, she had to watch the way people treated her son and ultimately see him die on the cross. And yet all the time knowing who he was. If we think about the people that have inspired us or our people that, um, yeah, the inspirational people that we thought about at the beginning, does their story have a story of leaving something? Or maybe a story that involves sacrifice in some way, big or small? You see, Christianity isn't, if you like, the icing on the cake of life. And often I think in our culture, that's how it's seen in many ways. So being a Christian or signing up for Christianity maybe is on a par of being seen of signing up to the, join the gym or a programme for good, clean living, where we get to live a bit nicer and do good in the world. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think the way in which the Bible tells us to live and shows us how to live does mean we get to live in the best way and it does do good for the planet and the world around us, but that's a whole different talk that we're not gonna go into tonight. But Christianity isn't the icing on the cake of a, of a good life already but it is about living a life of both surrender and a life of adventure, where we're focused on a purpose which is bigger than ourselves, bigger than our dreams, bigger than our hopes, bigger than our desires, but part of something that has an eternal value, probably most of which we will never really get to see in completeness in our lives. I'm sure Mary, that day before the angel came to visit her, had been thinking over months, maybe years, about marrying Joseph and her dream about what that life would be, maybe settling down, maybe having a few children together. But God's call on Mary's life was bigger than that. There was a bigger adventure out there, which would have an impact not only on her, but the whole of the world and the whole of the rest of history. I imagine day to day that call wouldn't have been that exciting. Been a lot of changing nappies, a lot of cooking dinner, a lot of housework because even the best adventures involve a lot of the mundane and these days involve plenty of admin. But if we could ask Ad Mary at the end of her life, did she regret being obedient, even though the cost, even though the shame, even though the stigma, even though the heartbreak of seeing your son die? I would imagine she wouldn't regret it. As we sit now at the end of 2020, None of us really know what 2021 is going to look like. COVID has taught us that, that suddenly the whole year, our whole life can turn on its head in a moment. And sometimes I think this uncertainty can make us feel anxious, but it can also give us freedom. We don't need to put our trust in a well-trodden path of life in 21st century Britain. 
with expectations of what we should do. But we can put our trust in a call and the one who calls us who is faithful in the things that he has for our lives. So maybe this Christmas, as we get our Christmas cards in the post and our pictures of Mary and Joseph, as we sing the carols, as we hear the familiar Christmas readings, let's not just look at Mary as this really sweet girl in a blue dress, but rather a really gutsy woman who was willing to listen to God, to respond to his call, or willing to step out no matter what that cost was, and to see her life impact literally the rest of history. Not blindly, not unquestioningly, not without wrestling or wanting answers, but in a considered way and an incredibly courageous way. Let her inspire us this Christmas. To end, I want to read us um, something from John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist Church. Something that he prayed, it was his covenant between him and God, a promise, if you like, that he'd, he'd made to God about what he wanted his life to be about. It's in Old English, so excuse the language, but let me read it to you. I'm no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit and be with us now. In the same way you have called throughout the Bible, in the same way that you called Mary, you have a call for us as well. A call to follow you and a call to serve you. Lord, we pray that we can be courageous this Christmas. Speak to us now, we pray. Amen. Amen. See you on Zoom in a few minutes. Looking forward to hearing about your heroes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been so lovely to have you with us. Uh, whether you've been joining on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, do uh, come and join us for a Zoom chat afterwards. Go and put the kettle on, go and grab a gin and tonic, go and grab some snacks and come and join us. It's usually a bit of a snack off, mm. uh, so people do usually have a, a little bit of a competition about snacks. So uh, do try and find the, the most imaginative you, you can tonight, or the most Christmassy maybe. Yeah. Um, but it would be great to see you on Zoom. The details are all are on the comments below. Great, see you in three.